welcome to another module in this massive open online course. So, we are looking at the singular value decomposition. Let us continue our discussion and let us look at other applications of S SVD and uh, in this module in the context of PCA that is principal component analysis which we have already seen is a very important technique in machine learning. All right. So, let us look at an application for of SVD in the context of PCA and as you are well aware PCA is we have discussed this before this is principal component analysis and this is a very important technique in machine learning remember to find the principal components of the data or to be essentially compress the data this is a very important technique in machine learning that is ML right and uh, what is the relevance and remember you might already remember what is PCA used for if you remember PCA is essentially used to find the principal axis or the directions along which the data that is available has the largest spread, right. For instance, let us take a very simple example, right. So, you have data which is like this and if you look at this, you can clearly see this is the direction right direction along which data has a large spread this is the direction along which the spread along which the direction along which the spread of the data is maximum all right. So, that is essentially your principal component analysis and uh, how to determine these directions right that is the question that you ask. how to determine this direction along which the spread is maximum and the answer to that is the following thing that is given the data x1 tilde x2 tilde xn tilde this is our data set right this is our data set you can think of n as basically the number of repetitions of an experiment this is the number of repetitions of an experiment and each vector let us say is of size m cross 1 and m is the number of features right. So, you have n vectors each of size m n can be thought of as the number of repetitions of an experiment that has been carried out and m is the number of features in each particular experiment that have been observed. Now, the PCA proceeds as follows the PCA procedure if you remember recall the PCA procedure first you determine the PCA procedure 
Now, what is the PCA procedure? First, you determine the mean, the mean is summation i equal to 1 to n x tilde i 1 over n, this is essentially the mean, the estimate of the mean rather, this is the estimate of the mean and now we subtract the mean, all right, the mean adjusted data define x i bar equal to x i tilde minus mu bar. So, what we are doing is essentially we are we are subtracting the mean right. So, we are subtracting the mean and now the next step in the PCA you might remember is to estimate the covariance of this data. So, the estimate of the covariance matrix. So, the covariance this is given as the follows this is R of x this is equal to 1 over n minus 1 summation j or i equal to 1 to n x bar i x bar i transpose which i can write as 1 over n minus 1 the matrix x bar transpose x bar where x bar you can see is the matrix, this will be the matrix x 1 bar transpose x 2 bar transpose x n bar transpose. So, this is you can clearly see this is number of rows is equal to n. and number of columns is equal to number of columns is equal to equals basically m right so this is essentially what is this this is an n cross m matrix so this is x bar and therefore i can write rx as 1 over n minus 1 x bar transpose x bar, which is I can also write this as x transpose x, where x equal to 1 over square root of n minus 1 x bar, x equal to x bar over square root of n minus 1. And then what we do is essentially the next step in the PCA is to perform the eigenvalue decomposition of Rx. Remember, recall that this perform the eigenvalue decomposition of Rx and take the p eigenvectors corresponding to the largest eigenvalues. All right, so you perform the eigenvalue. So, we perform what is the next step, next step R, we perform the eigenvalue decomposition we perform the eigenvalue decomposition and consider v 1 bar, v 2 bar v p bar, where these are essentially the eigenvectors of of x transpose x 
corresponding to the p largest eigen value. corresponding to the p largest eigen values and here you will note that r x now recall r x r x is equal to x transpose x. So, we are looking at the eigen vectors of x transpose x, but remember the eigen vectors of x transpose x are nothing but the right singular vectors of the matrix x, this is an important property. So, the property that we want to realize here is eigen vectors of x transpose x equal to the right singular vectors these are the right singular vectors of the matrix x. So, instead of looking at the eigen value decomposition of x transpose x, I can take the matrix x and look at the singular value decomposition of x, right. So, I can directly without considering x transpose x, I can consider x equals u sigma v transpose that is I can directly look at the singular value decomposition of the data matrix x. Remember recall this is your n cross m matrix right this is your n cross m matrix x bar is this is an n cross m matrix and uh, therefore, now what I have is I basically have the singular value decomposition. And now consider the right singular vectors and if you look at x transpose x transpose equals v sigma u transpose and now let us look at this matrix v which contains the right singular vectors v 1 bar, v 2 bar so on up to v bar p then you have v bar p plus 1 so on and we consider now this vectors right the right singular vectors correspond the p right singular vectors corresponding to the largest singular values consider now the p right singular vectors right corresponding to the largest singular values right because remember sigma the singular values are arranged in decreasing order. So, we have sigma 1 greater than equal to sigma 2 greater than equal to sigma t greater than equal to sigma p plus 1 and all of them are in turn greater than equal to 0. So, we have the p largest singular values which are nothing but the eigen uh, square root of eigen values. So, these are the p largest singular values. which are equal to the square root right which are basically the square root of eigen values of x transpose x and therefore, now the principal axis right the PCA vectors which are also the principal axis, the principal axis 
these are given by the vectors v 1 bar, v 2 bar up to v 1 bar. Right? Now, what are these? These are the right singular vectors of the matrix X corresponding to the large corresponding to the P largest singular values. corresponding to the p largest singular values and these are the principal axis right and therefore the principal components are given by the projection of the data vectors along this principal axis right so you take how do you get the principal components so to obtain the principal components take the projection of the data vector each data vector x bar i along these principal axis so how to obtain the principal components. Now, the principal components for each vector, if you remember, these are given by the principal components are given by you take uh, the matrix of principal axis that is v 1 bar transpose, v 2 bar transpose, so on and so forth, v p bar transpose. This is essentially this is a p cross m matrix and take the projection of x bar i, right. So, you are forming the projection. So, this operation is essentially projection of x bar i along the principal axis and this is equal to remember the notation that we used is x check i and x check i is essentially this is a p cross 1 vector containing the principal p cross 1 vector this contains the principal components. of x i and more specifically the p principal components of x i x bar i which are the projections right which are basically obtained by the projections of x bar i along the principal axis right the directions that have the largest spread which are basically v 1 bar v 2 bar v p bar ok. And you can call this matrix as the matrix basically you can call this as the matrix v transpose. So, you can write this principal component vector x check i is nothing but you can write this as x check i x check i you can write this as x check i equals v transpose times x bar i where what is v transpose v transpose comprises of v 1 bar transpose, v 2 bar transpose, v p bar transpose, which are where v 1 bar, v 2 bar, v p bar are the right singular vectors of the matrix X corresponding to the largest singular values. So, that is the use of SVD in the principal component analysis and I have already told you the principal component analysis is one of the most important techniques that is used for data reduction or data compression in machine learning because typically in machine learning what happens is the data vectors that you have have an enormous size. For instance, you have an image which is let us say even a modest image has 256 cross 256 pixels which means you have 
2 to the power of 8, 2 to the power of cos 2 to the power of 8, that is 2 to the power of 16 pixels. So, that is a data vector of size 2 to the power of 16, which means now to store this and process it requires huge complexity. So, to compress that, for instance, in applications such as facial recognition, one can therefore use PCA to extract the principal components and then one can directly deal with the principal components rather than dealing with the entire vector. So, that is an important application of, so that is, so that makes PCA very relevant in machine learning and this directly makes the SVD therefore very, very important in the context of PCA and naturally the context of machine learning. Let us look at another very interesting application of SVD and that is to develop a low rank approximation of a matrix. So, one of the other examples that we want to look at is basically in the context of a low rank approximation. We want to develop a low rank approximation. What do we mean by that? Given a matrix H, let this be an M cross, let this be an M cross N matrix. Now, we would find, we would want to find another matrix H hat. find another matrix H hat such that we want to minimize the norm square and this is the Frobenius norm minimize norm of H minus H hat square. Now, in case you are wondering what is the Frobenius norm, this norm of a bar f square, this is the matrix, no, uh, this is the matrix Frobenius norm, which for a matrix, real matrix, we have already seen, this is nothing but trace of A transpose A. That is essentially the extension of the Euclidean norm, sorry, square root of trace of A transpose A, which is essentially if you look at it basically the extension of the Euclidean norm to the matrices that is square root of i equal to 1 for an m cross n matrix square root of i equal to 1 to m square root of j equal to 1 to n magnitude A i j square is take the sum of the magnitude squares of the all the elements and then take the square root. Naturally, the square of the Frobenius norm will be simply the square magnitude sum of the magnitude square of all elements of A. So, the A of square this will be sum, sum i equal to 1 to m, j equal to 1 to n magnitude a i j square. Okay. So, therefore, we want to develop, now we want to develop the low rank approximation. What we mean is we want to find another matrix such that given a matrix H such that H minus H hat is minimum, right. So, minimize norm H minus H hat subject to the constraint what is this constraint and this is a very interesting constraint unlike some anything we have seen before rank of h hat we want to restrict the rank of h hat to p that is subject to the constraint and p is less than or equal to of course to make this problem meaningful p has to be less than or equal to minimum of m comma reason being because rank is anyway uh, minimum of le, uh, minimum of m comma n less than or equal to minimum of m comma n if p is greater than minimum of m comma n then h itself is the best p rank approximation 
uh, is the best low rank approximation, age itself is the best low rank approximation to, uh, uh, I mean, age itself is the best low rank approximation to age, right. So, we want to consider it, consider the cases where the rank of age is greater than P. For instance, let us say we have a 100 cross 100 matrix, right, example, let us take a simple example, right, let us take a simple example, let us say we have a 100 cross 50 matrix that is m equal to 100 and n equal to 50. And we want to ask the question what is the best and now let us set p equal to 5, right. And we want to ask the question uh, what is the best what is the best rank 5 approximation to what is the best rank 5 approximation to bear, right. What is the best rank p? So, p equal to 5, right. So, what is the best rank 5 approximation? That is, what is the best matrix h hat such that h hat has rank 5 and norm h minus h hat square is minimum or norm h, h minus h hat one and the same right. So, h hat has so you have rank h hat equals p and you have minimum norm h minus h hat. Or another way to look at it is think of uh, from the set of all matrices of rank 5, right, from the set of all matrices of rank 5, find the matrix that has, right, that is the best approximation to H. And the answer to that is very simple, the answer to that is incredibly simple. So, we take this is given as follows, this can be achieved as follows. Start with the SVD of H, okay. So, once again we start with the SVD of H u sigma v Hermitian or if you want to look at real matrices u sigma v transpose and essentially you can write it in this fashion, you can write it as the columns u 1 bar, u 2 bar, u bar p, u bar p plus 1 and so on and then we have the singular value sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma p, sigma p plus 1 and so on. We do not care what about what the rest are and we have v 1 bar transpose, v 2 bar transpose v p bar transpose v bar p plus 1 so on. And now, the best approximation rank p approximation is given as follows. We take the left sub matrix of H that is we take the left right, we can consider the left m cross p sub matrix, let us call this as u tilde. What is u tilde? It contains the left singular vectors corresponding to the largest singular values, right. Corresponding to corresponding to the p largest singular values.
corresponding to the p largest singular values and then we take the matrix the diagonal matrix this is sigma this will be your p cross p matrix containing the largest singular values sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma tilde let us call this sigma tilde so sigma tilde is basically so your u tilde is basically your u1 bar u2 bar up to up bar this is your m cross p matrix corresponding to the right singular vector uh, containing right singular left singular vectors corresponding to the p largest singular values sigma tilde is your matrix that is diagonal matrix sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma p containing the p largest singular values in decreasing order containing containing the p largest singular values in decreasing order remember we already have sigma 1 greater than equal to sigma 2 greater than equal to sigma p which is in turn all of these are non negative in turn greater than equal to 0 right greater than equal to sigma p in turn greater than equal to 0 and v tilde is the top remember v tilde is this is the top p cross n right you can think of this as the top p cross n sub matrix right so v tilde or v tilde transpose you can think of this as the top p cross n sub matrix comprising of v1 bar transpose v2 bar transpose v p bar transpose and this contains the right singular vectors contains the right singular vectors corresponding to the p largest singular values. and therefore the best rank p approximation to h is now given by h hat now the best rank p approximation is given as h hat equals u tilde sigma tilde v tilde transpose right and this is the best this is the best rank p this is the best rank p approximation and essentially why do we need this best rank p approximation this is nothing but a very compact representation of the matrix h because a matrix h can be of a very large size remember 100 into 50 right but when you develop a rank 5 approximation it represents that essentially h can be compressed and can be represented the column space can be represented as a linear combination of essentially 5 columns the row space can be represented as a linear combination of 5 rows and essentially the dominant axis corresponding to correspond to the singular value sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma the, uh, the gains along these axes correspond to the sig singular value sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma 5. So, h hat is essentially if you think about this it is a compact representation of h and has several applications again 
it has basically very similar to PC again can be used to represent uh, essentially compact ways to essentially save transmit like store this matrix H, transmit matrix H and manipulate this matrix H, right. So, in case you are wondering why we need this low rank approximation, it is essentially a compression of matrix H or also you can think of it as a very compact. a very compact representation of the matrix H, all right. So, that essentially gives us the interesting applications of SVD. So, we have seen two very interesting applications of SVD. One is in the context of PCA principal component analysis that is instead of going to the eigenvalue decomposition of X transpose X, we can directly look at the singular value decomposition of x and look at the right singular uh, vectors, right, the right singular vectors corresponding to the larger singular values of x and that gives us the principal axis. And the other is to develop uh, the best low rank approximation, right, the best compressed version of a given matrix H of very large size. Once again, you perform the singular value decomposition, take the left sing the left the sub matrix corresponding to which are left singular vectors corresponding to the p largest singular values, right singular vector, uh, right single sub matrix of the right singular uh, comprising of the right singular matrices, uh, uh, singular vectors corresponding to the p largest singular values that is what we are calling as V tilde transpose and then we have the diagonal matrix sigma tilde containing the p largest singular value sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma p along its principal diagonal and then that is sigma tilde and then you have u tilde, sigma tilde, v tilde transpose that gives the best p rank approximation to h that is h hat which gives the which is the best p rank approximation to h. All right. So, as you can see the SVD is a very efficient technique, a very important interesting and a very efficient technique and it has a lot of applications again. We have seen in terms in MIMO wireless communications, machine learning, principal component analysis, compression, you can think of signal representation, signal compression and of course, across fields just like the eigen very similar to the eigenvalue decomposition uh, and probably in fact much more because eigenvalue decomposition remember is defined only for positive symmetric positive symmetric I mean uh, for uh, I mean is defined only for square matrices singular value decomposition is defined for any matrix of arbitrary dimensions right. So, therefore, can be used and has a very very significant applications and therefore, it is definitely one of the most important concepts once again in all of linear algebra and matrix algebra. So, please go through this again, try to understand it and try to appreciate the concept along with the examples and the applications. We will continue this discussion in subsequent modules. Thank you very much.